All right, so 4.8, the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem, now, um, Pythagoras was an uh, ancient Greek guy, and maybe you've heard of him, maybe not. But uh, the Pythagorean theorem, one thing we need to remember, because Pythagoras is considered to be like a really smart dude. Some people say he came up with the Pythagorean theorem, but that's not true. The ancient Egyptians, which were way before the ancient Greeks, were using the Pythagorean theorem. They just weren't calling it the Pythagorean theorem. They were using it uh, particularly in construction, uh, I don't know, methods or applications, right? Like, um, for those of you that have worked in construction, right, if they want to know if something is square, they use the 3, 4, 5 triangle. So they measure this. They'd say, well, this is my corner. They measure 3 inches this way or feet, whatever the measurement may be. They measure four inches this way, and then they mark. They make these two marks, and then they say, "Look, if this is five inches, then I know that my corner is square, and it's a ninety-degree angle, and it's perfect." Okay, um, and if it's off, if it's off, it's like if this was five point eight inches, then it's like, "Well, that's really big. That's definitely not ninety degrees, and then something needs to be fixed." So that's an application of the Pythagorean theorem which it works like this so it and, and again this only applies to right triangles now you just so we understand what a right triangle is a right triangle is a triangle with a 90 degree angle which is in mathematics is uh, represented with this little mark right here which it just creates a box in the corner that is and this is what makes it right also it's that's a 90 degree angle okay so it's makes a T or an L, however you want to say it. But there are parts to a right triangle that we need to be familiar with, and that is the two legs. Now, the thing we need to notice about the two legs is they alone make the 90-degree angle. They're the two sides of the triangle that make this 90-degree angle. This fourth side is the hypotenuse, and uh, we do have to remember this word hypotenuse because we use it quite often. But the hypotenuse is always the longest side of this right of any right triangle. But in addition to that, it's opposite from the 90 degree angle. I always, when, when looking at this for me, I always look at this as kind of like an arrow. Like, hey, it's point. See how it's pointing at the hypotenuse like that, right there. Well, that's that's the 90 degree angle, and it's. It's the hypotenuse never makes up the 90 degree angle. It's always opposite to that 90 degree angle. Now, if we go back far enough to ancient Greece, Pythagoras, just to give you guys a little bit, a little bit of history on this, the ancient Greeks, um, well, they didn't have iPads and Xboxes and Playstations to play video games on. And I don't know what music was really like back in those days, but they did like to party. And sometimes they like to have math parties, right? Like you guys on a Friday night, you know, you go out and you hang out with buddies or pals or whatever, you know. I mean, COVID it may be different, but in any case, you guys like to party and it's it's just very different than what they were doing because the ancient Greeks would be like, look, dude, if we can get a group tonight and figure out some triangles, some math, dude, it's going to be it's going to be off the charts. And people would come to these parties and they'd be like, dude, we're going to figure out some triangles tonight, right? And then there was one guy that was like master triangle solver guy, and that was Pythagoras. Well, Pythagoras became kind of like a cult leader of this triangle people. And they loved to party and eat triangular sandwiches, so forth. But they became so powerful that eventually, like, you know, a lot of powerful regimes that... Uh, well, they started to, well, let me put it like this. There was a guy that argued with Pythagoras about something. It was something to do with square roots. And uh, Pythagoras didn't like to be argued with in this case. He was being told that he was wrong. So when you're powerful and you're being told that you're wrong, what do you do? Of course, you kill him. That's what happened. So... <laughs> 
Pythagoras, with his own two bare hands, my understanding is he drowned the guy. And uh, history has shown that in the argument between the two, the guy that perished was the guy that was correct. So a little bit of interesting piece of math history. Well, I say interesting, and I'm using that very lightly, and I understand that. But All right, so this is the actual Pythagorean, the theorem of Pythagoras here. So they would say, well, look, you, you take this leg right here and this leg, and if you take those values and take them to the power of 2, we say would square them. And if you look at the hypotenuse and square it, right, the power of 2, it's equal. On different terms, let me, let me show you guys how this kind of works pictorially. Right, we got a leg, and we got a leg, and then we got a hypotenuse. That wasn't a good hypotenuse, but there we go. That's okay. This is a right triangle, and I got two red legs and then a purple hypotenuse right here. What this means is if I took the area of this side length as a square, and if I took the area of this side length as a square, hopefully my squares aren't too bad, it would be the same area as this side length as a square. And yes, I've drawn better pictures before, but rarely. So um, these two red, red squares would fit perfectly into the area of this purple square. Okay, That's what the Pythagorean theorem is saying. And that's what those people were meeting about in ancient Greece. Talk about, they would talk about it often. They'd be like, look at these two legs. Would they give, what hypotenuse would they give us? And then they would figure it out. And they loved it so much. So now next time you guys throw a math party, you'll know what you need to do and how to do it. You guys can make some posters and flyers and put them up on the street signs and stuff. So find the missing value in this triangle pictured. And some of you guys may know it because we just used it. But let's identify the parts of this triangle at least, okay? So it, it shows the right angle. It may not do that in the homework, just so we know. But this red length right here would be a leg. And this red length here, also a leg. Again, that's because they make up this right angle. And that's the best way I can uh, that I found that students remember which sides are leg lengths legs and which sides are hypotenuse which means that this side length c is the hypotenuse okay so to go to the formula we've got leg to the power of two plus leg to the power of two equals hypotenuse to the power of two and right here we see that the leg values are three and four so we'll take these to the power of two and add them together which equals the hypotenuse which is shown with the letter c to the power of two now, 3 to the power of 2 is 9. We got uh, 9 on that. And 4 to the power of 2 is 16. So again, once I add these together, that's the area of those as squares, right? It should be the hypotenuse as a square also. 9 plus 16 is 25. So I got 25 equals C to the power of 2. Now, when we talked about square roots, uh, we looked at the perfect squares first, right? What this also means for square roots is that they are inverse operations of squares or powers of two, which also means that they undo powers of two. So that what that means here, and I'm using a principle of equality, which I haven't really fully defined yet, but it works, okay? I want you guys to remember this. If you take the square root of both sides on this, then it gets rid of that square. So now instead of c to the power of 2, I just have c. And the square root of 25, that is a perfect square of 5. Now again, this let me go back to the area thing. This is this is the area if if I had drawn a square up here, right? Like um some square like this. And this was the side length. That would have been the square. It's not a very good square, but it works. I would have been saying, well, I need the. I don't want the area of that square. I want the side length of that square, which is why I take the square root of it. The square root of that area is 5. Now, just like I said in the beginning with the construction application, this is a 3, 4, 5 triangle. It's one of the most common right triangles used in mankind 
and it's been used for millennia. So this is how we use the, the Pythagorean theorem to solve for a hypotenuse. Now, we could use it to solve for a leg as well, which we're going to do eventually. But, um, yeah, we'll, we'll do that eventually. Let's look at this example first. So, you know, we've got a missing side length, a missing value in this triangle. You'll have to determine if it's leg or hypotenuse, but see if you can find the actual value of C there. I'll give you guys one minute. Try it out using the Pythagorean theorem. So just to identify, are we dealing with hypotenuse or legs? Um, since I look at the right angle, which is created by these two red sides, those are the legs. So one of the leg values is 9, and the other one is 12. Now, just so we understand as well, it doesn't matter which leg we say is which, okay? You can make this 12 and 9, and it wouldn't matter. It's going to give us the same answer. So to write out the rest of this, right, it's a leg to the power of 2, so 9 to the power of 2, plus the other leg to the power of 2, and this equals the hypotenuse to the power of 2, and the hypotenuse is our unknown side here, so that's the C value. So this gives us an equation that we can then solve. 9 to the power of 2 is 81, and 12 to the power of 2 is 144. So I'm going to add these together and see what that is, and compare it with c to the power of 2. So 81 plus 144, um, let's see, what is that, uh, 5 to 225. Oh, that's pretty good. So 225 equals C to the power of 2. Now, again, we don't want C to the power of 2. What we really just want is C. Well, how do I get C from C to the power of 2? Well, again, this 225 represents an area. I only want the side length, so I'm going to square root it. Now, the square, uh, the square root of 20... Let me start that over. The square root of 225 was not on our list of perfect squares to memorize. So I'm just going to go to the calculator and see what it gives me. Square root of 225 is 15. So this length right here is 15. All right, 9, 12, 15. A 9, 12, 15 uh, right triangle. Now I, I, I want to point this out again is if, if these were labeled like in inches or feet, make sure you're labeling these also um, because this would be kind of technically considered a, a word problem, okay? Now, it's not showing labels for these. It, it will eventually when we do see a word problem. All right, what about this one? Same idea. We got two side lengths that make up this right angle, which I'm, I'm just trying to use the same colors every time. So I got red, right? So we got one side length that's 6, and the other leg side length is 2. So we need to raise these, raise these to the power of 2, add them together, and this will be the hypotenuse, which is always the longest side of the triangle. And it, it is usually represented, the hypotenuse is usually represented by the letter C, but I, I can't guarantee that it will be that way on the homework. So just evaluating these, 6 to the power of 2 is 36, 2 to the power of 2 is 4. Again, I'm adding these together, this will equal the hypotenuse. To the power of 2. So 36 plus 4 is 40 and this equals the hypotenuse to the power of 2. Now this is a, uh, area of a square that green 40 is and same with the c to the power of 2 that's a square. I don't want uh, c to the power of 2 I don't want an area I want a side length so I'm just going to square root these all right so that gives me c now, this is where you can use prime factorization or perfect square. I really like the calculator method, so I'm typing into the calculator to find this square root of 40, which on the calculator shows is 2 times the square root of 10. And again, if, if this were a, if, if the values were labeled, I would have um, labeled this in whatever units it's using, but it's not. So I don't really need to worry about labeling it. It, it does say to round to the nearest hundredth, which, which I forgot to do. So again, we just go to the calculator, 2 times the square root of 10. And when I, when I push enter, it's going to give me the same thing back. But if I push that arrow button, it gives me the decimal of 
Um, eh, four, six, it doesn't matter because we're only rounding to the nearest hundredth, which is the two. The four right here is going to keep the two with two. We're not, we're not really added and adding anything to it. So this ends up being approximately 6.32. Which would, which would be the actual answer for this one. All right, what about this one? This, this one's kind of interesting, all right? So I'm going to give you guys... Try this one as well. One minute, okay? And then we'll go over it. One minute, go. So on this one, I got um, these two sides here. Again, I'm using red because these are both legs. Because they make up this right angle. And again, I wouldn't expect this right angle to be shown on the homework. So you'll need to identify where these make this 90 degree angle, okay? So one of my legs is 5, and the other one, it's not just 11, it's the square root of 11. And that's okay. We can work with it. So to write out the rest of the theorem, Pythagorean's theorem here, uh, 5 to the power of 2 plus the square root of 11 to the power of 2, it's going to equal the hypotenuse. And again, we know this is the hypotenuse because it's opposite of that green right angle. And again, it's shown with C. Well, 5 to the power of 2, that's 25. Now, the square root of 11 to the power of 2, I don't think we've seen that before. Let's put it in the calculator and see what it gives us. Okay, so I got square root of 11. I'm going to come out of it and then make to the power of 2 like you see there. When I push enter, it gives me 11. Now, the reason why this is 11, and only 11, and we don't want to mistake it for 121, is because here we have this square, and here we have a square root. Those are inverse operations, which really just mean that they undo each other, okay? So a power of 2 and a square root, they undo each other, which means we're just left with the number. To put this a different way, it's like saying I got the square root of 11 times the square root of 11, which is the square root of 11 times 11, which is the square root of 121. Well, 121 is a perfect square, which is 11. All right, so that's why this comes out 11, and that's, that's why that rule works. So we're going to add those together, and this should be equal to the hypotenuse as a square. So we'll add these together. Uh, what do we got? Uh, 25 plus 11, that's 36. This would equal C to the power of 2. And again, I don't want C to the power of 2 or a square. I want the side length of that square. So how do I get the side length of that square? I'm just going to square root both of them. Because again, uh, for principles of equality, if you do something to one side of an equal sign, you should do it to the other side. So this gives me just the C value and the square root of 36. That is a perfect square. So this side length would be 6. If you guys made mistakes while you're doing it, hopefully you're seeing those mistakes. And you're, you're making, hopefully they're smaller adjustments. If you need to make bigger adjustments, that's okay. Again, a lot of this stuff comes with practice, which you'll get plenty of in the homework. All right, so this one is different because let's identify the parts of this right triangle. Here I've got my two legs, and then opposite of my right angle is the hypotenuse in purple. But in this case, it's one of the legs that is missing, and again, it doesn't really matter which one you uh, make the B or not. So I've got a, a leg of 24, and the other leg is just a B value, and we're going to be solving for this B because that's the missing value. Um, this one says it's around to the nearest hundredth. And the hypotenuse for this one is 25. So we've got both of these to the power of 2. We'll add them together. This should equal the 25 to the power of 2. Now 24 and 25 are outside of the um, perfect squares that we wanted memorized. So I'm going to go to the calculator, 24 to the power of 2, which is 576. So this one comes out as 576. And then 25 to the power of 2 in the calculator also. 25 to the power of 2 equals 625. All right, now 576 plus b to the power of 2 is going to equal 
this 625. And that is a 2 right there. Well, this is an equation, and I don't want to square root at this point because I have something being added to the letter, right? The variable, which we don't want with equations. We want to isolate the variable. So that means I'm going to have to subtract 576 from both sides of this equation. So I'll subtract 576, and that drops this b to the power of 2. Which would then equal 625 minus 576 is, oh, that works out pretty good, 49. Right there. Then, we'll take the square root of both sides of this equation. Because, again, I don't want the area, I want the side length. Which would give us b equals, 49 is a perfect square, you guys, that's 7. And, again, uh, the sooner you guys can memorize that those perfect per, first 12 perfect squares I think the better off will be but if not a calculator will work okay so the last thing I'm gonna do is check now I did the 625 minus 576 in my head so I'm gonna check that as well and it is 49 so that's good I don't always do it in my head correctly so I recommend using a calculator even for a subtraction like this I didn't just almost for time, but maybe now it's taking more time. There we go. In fact, let, let's go ahead and check, right? So 24 to the power of 2 is 576. And I'm saying that B is 7. I know 7 plus, I'm sorry, 7 times 7 is 49. So I'm going to take 576, add 49, push enter, and I should get 625, which I do. Now, I could take this one step further and say I want this... The, uh, square root of 625, right? So square root of 625 in my calculator, which does show us 25. Again, we, we pretty much figured that out in this step when we did the green part right there. All right, this is a really good one. And I, I don't know that we see any problems like this on the homework, but it's a good application to help us understand um, how to solve equations, especially if they have squares in them. And we won't see much more of these in 950, but we will in 980, okay? So find the missing value of the right triangle picture around to the nearest hundredth if needed. You guys take a minute and see if you can figure this one out and then we'll go over it, all right? One minute, go. So if you guys are still working on that, that's okay. I'll just finish up and then check again what you have with what we end up doing here. Now identifying the parts of the triangle, that's kind of where we always start so that we understand where these values go, right? Now we can see the right angle here, and the legs make up the right angle. So these two red sides combine to give us that right angle. Both of those values are x, okay? So I'm just going to replace the legs with x. I know I will take these to the power of 2 and add them together. And this equals the hypotenuse here to the power of 2 as well. Now we know this value of the hypotenuse. It's 20, so I, I got 20 to the power of 2. And I can, I can find 20 to the power of 2, right? So in my calculator, I put 20 times 20, or 20 to the power of 2, and it gives me 400, okay? So this sets up as x to the power of 2 plus x to the power of 2 equals 400. Well, if we go back to, I think it was 2.2, we know that x to the power of 2 and x to the power of 2 are like terms because the exponents are the same. The coefficients may not be the same, but that doesn't really matter to us. What we also should notice is that these have phantom 1 coefficients. So when I combine these x to the power of 2s, I have 1 plus 1. That gives me 2x to the power of 2s, which equals 400. Now, we don't want a coefficient of 2 for any um, variable, right? We just want a coefficient of 1. We'll make it a phantom 1. But I want to get rid of that 2. So I'll, what do I do to it? I need to divide both sides by 2, which makes that a 1. 1x to the power of 2. Well, 400 divided by 2 is 200. Now, I'm, I'm not so worried about the 1. I'm going to make that a phantom 1. And to finish this off, I've got a square 
with an area of 200, but I want the length. So we got to square root both sides here, which is just going to give me X. Now I can go to my calculator and put this in the square root of 200. And that will tell me, or the calculator is going to tell me right away the perfect or the exact answer, 10 times the square root of 2, right? But this one says that we need to round to the nearest hundredth. So in my calculator, and you guys, you guys will see this symbol as well. So I had equals, let's put this symbol in here. That's not done very well, but you'll see it from time to time, okay? So that's an approximation. 10 to the power of 2 approximately is, because we are rounding, this is 14.142. Uh, and since we want this to the nearest hundredth, I'm looking at this 4 here underlined. So the 2 is not going to add anything to that. So it really ends up being 14.14. Now, this is both x's, right? Because this is x equals 14.14. I got a little sloppy right there. It's equals. So that means that both of the red sides, this is 14.14, and this side length also, since it was also represented by x, is 14.14. Now, some of you guys, and this is common at this point in the lesson, is like, well, I got to get 20 here, right? So we got 10 and 10. Well, remember, we're not looking to add the sides. We're looking to add the squares of the sides. So maybe you said like even 15 and 5, which is good for guess and test. But where we get in, uh, this is really a um, irrational number because the decimal is ugly. So uh, we don't really want you guys using a guess and test method on this one. But instead, the Pythagorean theorem would be a better method. All right, so let's look at this problem. There's, there's not problems like this on the homework, but I think it's a good evaluation of where we're at in terms of understanding the, the Pythagorean theorem, okay? Because this is a common error that we find uh, not only on homework, but on, on tests that we've done in the past. So it says, Raphael was asked to solve for the length of the hypotenuse in a right triangle with legs that have side lengths of four and five. His work is shown below. For us, it's above, but it doesn't matter. He made a mistake when solving Explain the mistake and then solve the problem correctly. Well, uh, if we were to evaluate this, this is the Pythagorean theorem. We got two legs, A and B, which he does replace with four and five. Those are legs. It said they were legs here. So we got four to the power of two plus five to the power of two equals C to the power of two. Well, four to the power of two is 16. Five to the power of two is 25. And 16 plus 25 is 41. The problem right here, and this, again, it's, it's common enough that I think it's important to address, is that we forget that this is also c to the power of 2. Now, it may not happen exactly right there. Sometimes we forget to put the c to the power of 2 in either one of these steps. But it's there. That's part of the Pythagorean theorem, is that we, we remember that it's the hypotenuse to the power of 2. So, to solve this one, we would just... Simply take the square root of both of these. And C is, it didn't say one, one answer or the other. So I'm going to find the perfect answer or the exact answer, which is the square root of 41. That uh, cannot be simplified. And you know, we can put in the calculator to check, but it'll tell us it's the square root of 41. Bam. So the actual answer to this problem would have been the square root of 41. Again, it's just that, that really is just one step that was missed on that, okay? Another common error we see in a problem like this is the mixing up of legs and hypotenuse. Now this one said specifically that the legs were 4 and 5. Um, so it's important to remember that it the legs, we're taking the squares of them and adding them, and it's always equal to the hypotenuse. If it, if it was a word problem like this one, and it involved the hypotenuse, or we knew the value of the hypotenuse, it would have had to have told us. And same with the pictures that we've been seeing. If it just gives us a picture of a triangle, we need to know which different parts we're dealing with on a right triangle. It's either a leg or a hypotenuse. It has to be one or the other. Now, if you guys are if you guys have trouble remembering the hypotenuse, there's a skit by Key and Peele that you guys can watch. And I, I, I thought it was hilarious, but 
Um, it at least should help you if you don't find it funny. It should at least help you guys to um, know what the hypotenuse is. Okay. All right, here's a good word problem. A ladder leans on a building that is 10 feet tall, and the base of the ladder is 2 feet from the base of the building. What is the minimum height of the ladder? I like to draw pictures for these, not because I'm really great at drawing pictures, even though I do like them, um, but I just like to see what it would look like, okay? So we got a ladder leaning on a building, and just for the sake of, I don't know, drawing, I'm just going to make it a square building like this. I, I'm not worried about putting a roof on it, you guys. <laughs> so if you want to put a roof on it, that's fine. But in any case, we got... Uh, the ladder leans on a building is 10 feet tall. So right here, we're going to say that this side here is 10 feet, right? And the base of the ladder is 2 feet from the base of the building. What is the minimum height of the ladder? Now, I mean, if you've ever, ever dealt with ladders, usually it kind of goes a little bit past the top of the building like this. Um, more for safety than convenience, but it is convenient. But if this was my ladder right here, so we'll put this in ladder. Hopefully I spell it right. Ladder with D's, not T's. So, uh, it's saying that the base of the ladder, that's right here. This is the base of the ladder. It's two feet from the base of the building. So this is two feet right here. And then it's saying, what's the minimum height of the ladder? So it's saying, well, if you're just going to lean the ladder so that the tip of it was on, uh, on the top of the building, then what is the minimum height? That's... Or that is the minimum height, okay? Well, what we have here is the Pythagorean theorem. And yes, the green side here and the red side there make up the two legs. And this is red right here. That's the distance the ladder is from the base of the building. So my two legs are 10 and 2. And the hypotenuse is just the length of the ladder. Well, we're going to square the two legs and add them together which should equal the hypotenuse as a square. And 10 to the power of 2 is 100. 2 to the power of 2 is 4. So again, we'll add these together to get the hypotenuse to the power of 2. 100 plus 4, that's 104, which equals the hypotenuse as a square. Well, I don't want the hypotenuse as a square. I want just the hypotenuse. So... I'll take the square root of both of these. Uh, what is the minimum height of the ladder? We'll do both in this case. So let's see if it can be simplified. I'm just going to the calculator. Whoop. Square root uh, 1, 104. Let's see if that can be simplified. It can. The calculator shows it's 2 times the square root of 26, which is the hypotenuse. Now, we do need a label on this one. It's in feet. Now, this would be the exact answer. If we needed the decimal value, which is, it's, the decimal value is more applicable in this case because we're looking at the length of a ladder. Like, hey, you need to purchase a ladder for, for this job or whatever you're doing on the roof or whatever, okay? So how long would this ladder be? So I'm just going to push the arrow key on my calculator and it shows that it's about 10 point, I uh, didn't even say it around, but I'll just round it to the 10th because, um, I don't know, feet is more applicable in this case, right? It would be the more appropriate unit of measurement is in whole feet. So it's approximately, so I'll put approximately here for C, about 10.2 feet. So if you're going to purchase a ladder for this, um, again, you're looking at something around 10.2 feet-ish, certainly not less, I suppose. Uh, I, would, I would want something longer, but that's just me. Okay, but this... These two answers are good. They, uh, again, show the exact answer and then also the estimated answer.